All right, welcome back. This is Brandon again. Okay, so please forgive me for yesterday. Um, a lot of you may not know, but right now we're on Christmas break in the first week of the new year. Those are two weeks that um, Microsoft trainers have to use to typically study and take certification exams. And yesterday, yes, I was cramming all day. And today, after these videos are over, I'll also be studying all day and probably for the next two weeks before I start teaching again or, you know, consulting in about another month or so. Now, what I want to talk about right now, which is very important, is you guys have now hit you guys have now hit matrices and you've hit tables. Two very, very critical parts, okay? Now, on this third part, what we're going to do is we're going to continue to build the skill set. And by now, you're starting to pick up things. You're becoming familiar with how to run a report. You're starting to see, you know, how to fit things together, how to group, how to whatever else. This is very, very good. I told you, stick with me, and I promise you that you're going to learn so much over here. So, stick with me over here, and by the end of this, yeah, you're going to know SQL Server 2012 reporting. No doubt about it. I'll make sure of that. Um, this very next lesson is extremely important. If you want to make dashboards, it's this unit that's going to determine that. This is where we learn how to do what's called freeform reports. And by freeform reports, what we're doing is we're controlling the real estate of a page to be able to fit exactly what we want within that page. Guys, I can't tell you that there, um, I can't tell you of a more important section towards being able to use Microsoft's SSRS tool towards dashboarding than this one. Later, we'll get to KPIs and whatever else, but still, the key with the dashboard is the layout. That compressed layout into a page that you give to users where you choose on the right, the left, the center, you name it, woof. That's what's gonna matter. And that's what we're gonna do here. So, hope you guys enjoy it. Love this series coming up. Um, should be a lot of fun. Let's get started. Here we go. Okay, so this is a really important um, section and a really fun section because you guys can see it's the beginning of taking control of real estate to give us things like dashboards and whatever else. And what we're doing now is I'm going to take this tutorial, creating a free form report, change it up just a little bit with some additional steps and whatever else and a couple other things, just to highlight a few things. And we're going to explain it because this is the money section right here. If you had to ask me what's the most important section towards someone being able to make a dashboard, this would be it over here. Because what you do is you learn how to use SSRS and, you, and more importantly, you learn how to take control of the look and feel of an SSRS report. Now, list. What are lists and what do they actually do? Okay, so you have what are called tables, which appear just like this. You guys can see this little table over here with columns and rows, and that's traditional. All right, then you have a section that's known as a list. Now, let me explain how a list actually, actually functions. What occurs over here is that a list is essentially going to be a region that repeats itself, usually on every page. So whenever I say list, what I'm actually doing is I'm coming in and I'm making a, I'm making a repeatable region just like this. There's always a rectangle that kind of delineates the size of the list. So there's list one on, one on page one, list two on page two, and then list three on page three. Okay, that's first. Now, let's go a little bit further. Once you actually get your list like this, like over here, so I'll, I'll correlate this with page one, page two, page three. So there's page one, there's page two. And there's page three. And notice how it's going to be repeating every single time. Now what happens though here is you have to ask yourself, but wait, how does a list know what to repeat? Oh, good question. There's the million dollar question right there. How does a list know what to repeat on each page? You tell it by grouping. Now, if you just discovered this video on YouTube or something and you haven't watched the other ones and you're confused on grouping, please go back and watch the previous two parts um, and you'll understand it. But for over here, you tell a list what to repeat by grouping. And what happens? The list makes a separate page for every single distinct member of that group that you choose. That's the money shot right over there. So if you've got only one distinct member, then you group by that one member, that's nothing. But if you've got bunches of distinct members and it's grouped by all those um and it's grouped and it's grouped by you know for every single member you get a distinct page now what also happens is this the data you see any data that you see in that list is grouped by that distinct member so we're going to show that over here in code but just for right now let's say that we had sales for you know 
we had sales for United States, China, India, whatever, okay? So US, A, China, India sales, for example. And we call that territory. So called the territory field. All right, what would happen is we would end up getting three lists. And any data in those lists would own, um, and for each list we would see the data, like for example, in the USA list, we would see the data for USA. In the China page list, we would see the data for China. And in the India page list, we would see the data for India. So we not only take control of our real estate, but we get to look at it from some sort of group, essentially, which is also known as a perspective in some cases, or it could also be called a slice in other cases, but you guys see what's going on, this ability. So let's see these things because these are so essential, really in all of business intelligence, this concept repeats itself. Let's look at our Microsoft type of um, specific implementation and get to rocking. All right, so you guys all see the tutorial over here again. Uh, remember, I've taken all the tutorials from here purposely so that you can redo them. So very, very important that you get the experience after you watch me explain it. So remember that. And now I'm gonna go with new document. And once again, I'm gonna open up Report Builder. And whoops, let me click on reports over here. There we go. So I'll click on my reports library. This is SharePoint 2013, by the way. You might have SharePoint 2010 or, or something like that. And if you do, that's just fine. Um, these tutorials are very, very similar up until I get to Power View. There's new document right over here. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back over and I'm gonna click on Report Builder Report right over here, right? So I'm gonna launch Report Builder. Now you guys have seen me do this already, already um, for the previous two tutorials. If you're brand new though, you're seeing it the first time, right? And that's how we would typically launch one from SharePoint if it's been enabled. If we have a reporting library, that is, that I talked about. All right, great. Now, once we actually get a report, build a report, this is kind of interesting because now what we're going to do is we're going to start to develop a lot differently, okay? We're going we're gonna to start to see things from a different sort of perspective and whatever else. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a report from scratch this time. So in the past, we've always just had a table or a matrix or you name it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come back and make this report over here starting with the blank report which means don't include anything let me start from the very beginning and I'm going to alter everything okay now once we start with the blank report the first thing we do our steps are still the same always first tell reporting services where to go to find the data so you guys see over here there's this panel called report data report data is where SSRS goes to find the data so I've got two choices. I can either right click over here because the first thing we have to do is add a data source and we've covered data sources now, right? It's the text that tells, essentially in lay people's terms, it's the text that you enter, which tells SSRS where to go find the data, the database, um, what kinds of securities there, username and password, if any, and also too the name of the database that you'll be using. So you can either right click over here and click add data source, or you can click new right over there and click new data source right here. Excellent, okay. Now I click new data source right over there, okay, and I get that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a name and I'm gonna call it list data source. This will be important. What you want is really anything, if you can get away with it, anything in your list that's using the same data source is gonna be better because that's gonna make it easier later on to, get, to introduce uh, um, other types of functionality, particularly with passing parameters and whatever else as you get more advanced and as we get further into tutorials. Plus, you know, it makes everything work seamlessly. All right, now, once you get list data source right over there, right? It's going to ask you, use a shared connection or, or report model or use a connection embedded in my report. Let's just click use connection embedded in report because we don't have a shared connection set up yet. Then what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to click build. So what am I doing? Well, building a connection string, right, is just telling it the server name. So there's localhost. Now, I need to also tell it the username and password. I'm telling it use Windows authentication. So then that means read the username and password from Windows. And then select or enter a database name. I'm going to click over here and just add AdventureWorks 2012 and then I'll click OK. Truthfully, as I said before earlier, you could have used any database for this one because the query is going to self-generate. But just to make a point, I used it. Let me click Credentials over here and then use the username and password. And I tell, and I tell everyone why. Um, currently, this is a very tough time for instructors because during these two weeks, we, all, we have to bust our tails studying so we can pass certification exams. So I'm doing these videos in the middle of a huge, huge work week and I haven't had time to completely finish my SharePoint um, installation yet. I will later after I finish passing my certification exams. So there we go over here. And then use as Windows credentials right over there. So you guys can see that right off the bat, use as Windows credentials. And there we go. I'm just going to connect.
You wouldn't probably need to do that in real life because I'm almost sure that it'd be overwhelming that you'd have Kerberos set up. 